Hi, welcome to Outlaw Games. I'm your host, Anthony. And I'm Francis. Today, we are going to present to you the new, new Kingdom, Kingdom Gardeners. Gardeners. This yes. is a two to four player worker placement game published by New Kingdom Games. So what is New Kingdom Gardeners? So New Kingdom Gardeners um, is essentially, thematically, mm -hmm. we are gardeners who were appointed as gardeners after the master gardener created humans. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are off in our own realms. We were given a garden to tend uh, where we will be uh, placing uh, workers, hiring workers to do things for us. And we will also be planting seeds and pruning thorns, uh, all waiting for the return of the master gardener who will then judge us by how well our gardens are. I feel like I've, I've read this story before. I've read this story somewhere <laughs> before. It's very familiar, um, but let's go into Yes, end game. Well, so end game, end works, game yeah. again, very simple. So yeah. what you're doing is you're looking for this master gardener card. We're not really looking for it. It's going to show up at some point in the end of this deck, um, and we don't know exactly when that's going to happen, but we know approximately uh, it's going to happen towards the end of the game. So as you see the deck, this will be in there, and when this card comes out. Um, all the players are going to take uh, their turns until you get back to the start player, and then everyone will be judged. So the um, you will what's be happening, judged. you will be judged. So um, at that time, we're going to look at our gardens. We're going to count up mm -hmm. our fruits and see who has the most fruitful garden, and that person will be the winner. Yes, indeed. So let's talk a little bit about setup. Yes. Right? So if you look at the table here, this is the basic setup for two players. Uh, you're going to each have a player board. We're going to start with three fruit two um, doves. doves, which are our workers. We are also going to get um, dealt two gardeners, and we're gonna pick one to start with. Each gardener has an asymmetric ability. Uh, as you can see, they have um, a little bit of text, which tells you what their special ability mm -hmm. is. It allows you to, it's either passive or active, uh, depending, yeah, everyone's different. We're also going to get dealt five cards from the main deck, but before we do that, the deck is actually uh, structured in such a way that Based on player count, you're going to strip a certain amount of cards out. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to leave the miracles out while you do deal out the cards to the players because you don't start with those, and then you actually shuffle them back in the deck, and then you shuffle the master gardener card um, in the last like so many cards so that it you don't know when it's going to come up, mm -hmm. but you do know at some point when you get towards the bottom of that deck it will show up and then trigger end game for you. So the last part of setup is each player is going to go in their hand of five cards mm -hmm. and then automatically play any thorns they have. Yes. Thorns represent those followers in your garden who have gone astray yes. and leave behind the thorns. Prickly creeping path. thorns. So um, that's it for as far as setup goes. Mm -hmm. Once you get that done, then the player, the first player is going to go, and they are going to start us off with um, with, with their actions. actions. Yeah. yeah. So once you go through how those actions work. Cool. Absolutely. So at the beginning of the game, again, we've got these doves that we will use to really indicate what actions we're taking. So we're using these to select our actions. Um, I'll, I can place on my master gardener here. Uh, my first dove and your master gardener will or you're not your master gardener but your de gardener will always allow you to pray plant prune or appoint and then if there's any additional text at the bottom you can do that as well um, so i'll go over those actions very briefly um, first you can pray that allows you to draw two cards from this deck that we mentioned again deck is the timer so you want to be very cautious about how many cards you're pulling because you may also be pulling things you don't want like thorns so uh, but that's the pray action um, planting you'll be able to plant seeds and these will come out in this way mechanically this is how this works seeds and thorns and miracles all get planted to this bottom row and they always get planted to the right of the master gardener so these are going to scoot down of as you garden. play as you of your garden not the yeah. master gardener oh yeah sorry not the master gardener i know i am not the master gardener okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not so these are going to get planted to the right of your gardener in your garden um, or you can plant this to another player's garden so you can plant these to any garden you want why would you want to do that right mm -hmm. um, the way that this works mechanically is as you plant more seeds more miracles more things are happening in your garden these are all moving down. Do you have another seed I can plant really quickly sure. or something? Okay. So if I were to plant another seed here, these actually all move like this. And this thorn, like thorns do, creeps all the way over to your board. To the player so on the right. So if there were more players. You can players, imagine yeah. 
the implications of this. Right. Now, if there were something maybe on Anthony's board that I might want, maybe I plant a seed onto his board mm -hmm. and move everything over. Now, thorns are always played to your garden immediately. You can't play them to other people's gardens. Um, but I'm gonna talk about pruning next, and this is also pretty interesting. You can prune, you can pay two seeds uh, to prune or discard a thorn. And you can discard a thorn in anyone's garden, including your own garden, including other people's gardens. And to pay for that, you can do it in one of two ways. You can pay using the actual seeds, or I'm sorry, the actual fruits that you have um, on supply here, or you can pay cards with the seed values on them. And again, these values are gonna be used to determine your um, your garden's value at the end of the game. So you want to try and get as many fruits as you can. These are basically like victory points. So you pay in order to prune the thorns, if you prune the thorns from your own garden, great, you get rid of the of the thorn. If you prune from another player's garden, you actually get to keep this card and collect three fruits at harvest. So you wanna keep this off to the side. So really helpful to go into other people's gardens where things are a disaster and <laughs> try and prune those thorns. If they're not managing their gardens, it's almost like you're rewarded for going into their gardens and, and managing that. So. Uh, so that is, uh, that's pruning. Uh, we talked about praying. Uh, we talked about planting, appointing. So in your deck, you also have workers. And these worker cards do various things. Uh, right here, I have a reaper, which allows you to discard a seed from your garden or hand to collect its fruit immediately. Or you can play a, like this monk, take a prey or prune action. If you're pruning, you must still pay the required fruit. So you'll play these into, again, any gardens you can play it into your garden you can play it into somebody else's garden now if you if you end up making a team there's multiple copies of these um, of these uh, workers here try to find another one to show you here's another monk right um, we can play this monk onto here and that now creates a team and you'll get some bonuses for having these teams not only at the end of the game will you be able to add up um, up to a total of four on each of these uh, extra fruits. Um, but if you play these into other players' gardens, like so, uh, let's say I have a third one in there for you, that'll actually gain me another dove if I want, or a whole bunch of fruit. So it's always beneficial, again, to maintain your own garden, but really this game is kind of about holistically making sure that other gardens are also being maintained and you almost get more rewarded for well, doing Well, we're that. all his gardeners. We are. So we <laughs> we're responsible make... for checking on each other too. I yeah, think that's so the point, right? Yeah, so we want to make sure that we're keeping <laughs> all the realms clean. Yes, exactly. Right. Um, so again, yeah, you'll get some bonuses for doing that. Um, those are the four main actions. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really all you're going to do. So on your turn, you place as many doves as you can or as you want to to take actions. And once you're done, you'll recall your doves, bring them back up to your dove area, mm -hmm. and uh, draw a card. Yep. And, and then, then it's the next person's turn. And it's the next That's person's it. turn. And, and, and like Francis said, the, the strategy um, is in which player board to play your cards onto. Yes. Because uh, like she said, you can play multiple workers onto the same worker, as long as mm -hmm. they're the same, uh, to create those teams. But if I were to do it on my player board, the reward for doing that is not as good mm -hmm. as it is to do it on another player's board. Right. So you'll end up getting more fruit. You'll end up, you know, getting another dove, which is another worker uh, for worker placement. So um, these, like, not to be confused, you've got the workers and you've got the doves. Right. right. Doves are doves are for the worker placement. The workers themselves create additional worker placement slots yep. for you to put your doves. Right. So exactly. it lets you do more. On, on every round, right? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna go back and forth and you're gonna you know, eventually whittle down this deck until eventually you pull you know, the Master Garden card. And that's where the harvest comes in. And when they say it's harvest time, that's when you go through and you score up all the points on your player boards mm -hmm. by looking at these seeds. Uh, any the any, fruits. Uh, fruits, rather. Yep. Um, yeah, the fruits on the seed cards. Yep. So your thorns have these like darker fruits which are negative so for every seed uh, yeah, every thorn like that's still on your player board all nasty fruits yeah that's minus three so yeah. uh yeah like this is a miracle card um which so you want to get these on your player board yeah um, but you want to like keep them on your and player keep board. them on your <laughs> player board. but the, the challenge is you've got the other player playing cards into your tableau 
and moving your cards over yeah. so that you're losing those cards. But their cards are typically good because they're not playing thorns on you right. for the most part. Because as soon as you draw a thorn, uh -huh. you have to play it into your tableau, your tableau, your yeah. tableau not right. the players. And that gives them an opportunity to prune your thorns, which is what's worth three points. So if you right. get enough of these, like you can really string a lot of points together. Yeah. So that's the, so it's almost like the strong. thorns are like not good to have in your garden because they're not they're worth negative points. But right. also if you have a player like this who likes to just prune all your thorns mm -hmm. and don't put any thorns in your own garden, <laughs> <laughs> then you can score then, a, lot uh, can score points, a lot of points, right? Because I'm yeah. I'm gonna make sure that you know we're. We're keeping the gardens holistically. Mo though. Micromanaging my garden. Why not? Somebody has to. <laughs> You've got a lot of, of, a lot of thorns in my A lot garden, of people yeah. who just don't want to follow the path. I guess so, right? So, uh, but for the most yeah. part, I think that really covers the the main. That is um, yes. The main crux of the game and yep. what what you what you would expect to see with with this one. Mm -hmm. You have um, do you have the set of gardener cards? Um, the game um, comes no, with a whole bunch of gardeners to start off with, oh, okay. um, and they again do different things for you, asymmetric um, powers. So, like for example, the one I have sitting here is that I can place two doves on each of my workers, so they mostly have one worker space. Mm -hmm. That's pretty powerful. Yours yeah, so is when you pray. If you get thorns, you can discard them immediately. So, like yeah, she so just doesn't get there's cards. There's eight in total. Yeah, so tons of uh, tons of gardeners to use. Overall, um, obviously a light. Mm -hmm. game uh, accessible I think the age is um, 10 plus I would even say it might be a little bit lower a little than bit that. lower yeah. yeah so I mean there are, there are some little more complex strategies mm -hmm. in some of the the worker cards you put down right because they, they allow you to like manipulate the other players board mm -hmm. a little bit uh, and manipulate some of the cards on your own player right. board but but other than that it's mostly it's, it's pretty straightforward and you only have a few uh, options on your turn with regards to action, so it doesn't get unwieldy yes. uh, with that. So Yeah, so as always with these uh, kind of crowdfunding previews, we like to remind you that everything you see is in prototype, mm -hmm. so things will look a little bit different if you're watching this in the future to right. you know get a sense of what the game looks like. Ours might look a little bit different because it is a prototype. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so let us know, I, I guess, if we have nothing else I think on this, all the it, yeah. all the information for this Kickstarter will be down in the description as always. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions about our gameplay or our experience with this one, let us know in the comments below. We're happy to answer any questions for you about the game um, or direct you to somebody who can. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So uh, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time. We'll see you.